Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet this gorgeous French buttercream shawl. This is a beautiful shawl that you can wear really year round. It's squishy, it's soft. The yarn I'm using, we'll talk about in a few minutes, comes in tons of colors, so you can really make this in lots of colors. You could make it striped, uh, you could do solid like me. Um, this is uh, just done with some very easy basic stitches. And our finished piece measures about 19 and a half inches wide and about 56 inches long. So it's a nice generous size too that you can just really wrap around you. We're gonna go through this every stitch of the way. I'm gonna walk you through all the parts. And also the uh, free pattern, the free written pattern can be found on the blog. The link is below. You can also get an ad free PDF pattern in my shop. And of course this tutorial will be here forever. You can follow along um, via video here on the channel as well. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a tape measure is super helpful in case you're going to change the multiples and change the width of your scarf or the length, so this will be uh, handy to have. We're also going to be using a 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey in the black. I'll put a link down below if you'd like to get one for yourself. For our yarn, we're gonna be using 984 yards of a worsted weight yarn. Now I'm gonna be using four balls of color theory. This was um, from Lion Brand Yarns and Two of Wands. I'm gonna be using all the same color. You can really use any color you want. You can make it striped or whatever you want. Um, but I'm gonna be using four balls of the ivory. Now these do have dye lots, so if you're purchasing the yarn at the same time, just make sure they ha all have the same dye lot. Um, so you'll get consistency of color throughout your project. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna be using four balls of this. Each ball of this is 246 yards. And if you need to substitute yarn, again, we're gonna be using 984 yards of worsted weight yarn. Look for the little yarn ball with the number on your yarn label. This is a medium four on the yarn weight scale. And we're gonna be using um, the I 5.5 millimeter hook. So we are using the recommended hook for this yarn. So if you follow those guidelines, you'll be just fine if you need to substitute yarn. So let's get started. Okay, we have our yarn and hook and we're ready to go. Now I switched to my dark background just because we're doing a very light yarn and I have a white surface. So I switched to a more contrasting surface so you could see. So our multiple for our scarf is three plus two. If you're not familiar with the concept of multiples, all that means is when you're doing your starting chain, you're just gonna go three plus three plus three plus three plus three and so forth until you get the width that you want of your scarf and then add two more chains to that. So a multiple of three plus two, in case you need to change that, we're gonna be doing a starting chain of 62 chains, okay? So let me just zoom way in so you can see better. And what we're going to do is put a slip knot on our hook to begin. So what we want to do is wrap the yarn around our fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with the hook, bring up a loop, and then tighten it onto your hook. Okay, again, we're doing a starting chain of 62, okay? So to make a chain, we're going to wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 60, 61, and 62. So as you can see, our starting chain is pretty long. So we're gonna have a nice wide scarf. Again, if you want to change the width of your scarf, you can adjust those multiples of three plus two. So let's begin row one. Now we just have a few rows to learn and then we can kind of take off on our own. So we just have a few rows to learn and then we can kind of take off on our own. Okay, so for row one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in the second chain from the hook and work a single crochet. So the loop here does not count. We're gonna go one and two. So in that second chain from the hook, work a single crochet. Insert the hook into that chain and bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook and bring it through both loops. Then what we're gonna do is chain three, one, two, three, and then we're gonna skip two chains so one, two, and in the chain after that, we'll work a, another single crochet, okay? Just like that. So it's gonna create kind of like this loop, okay? So then what we're gonna do is just kind of do that all the way across. So what we wanna do is chain three, one, two, three, 
skip two chains, and in the chain after that, work a single crochet. We're gonna have a series of loops all the way across. Chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains, one, two, and then work a single crochet in the chain after that. Chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains, work a single crochet in the chain after that. Chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains, work a single crochet in the chain after that. Chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains, work a single crochet in the chain after that. I'm gonna get a little bit more yarn here. All right, so you can see we have a series of loops across here. Now what we're gonna do is chain three once again. One, two, three, skip two chains, work a single crochet in the chain after that. Chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains, work a single crochet in the chain after that. One, two, three chains, skip two chains, work a single crochet in the next chain. Chain three, one, two, three, Skip two chains, work a single crochet in the chain after that. Chain three, one, two, three. Skip two chains, work a chain, or a single crochet in the chain after that rather. Chain three, one, two, three. Skip two chains, work a single crochet in the next chain. Get a little bit more yarn from my yarn ball. Chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains, work a single crochet in the chain after that. Chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains, single crochet in the chain after that. Chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains, work a single crochet in the chain after that. One, two, three, skip two chains, work a single crochet in the chain after that. Chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains, work a single crochet in the chain after that. One, two, three chains, skip two chains, work a single crochet in the chain after that. Chain three, skip two chains, work a single crochet in the chain after that. And now we're towards the end of the road. So chain three, skip the next two chains, and in that very last chain, work a single crochet and row one is complete. And you can see we have some loops that go all the way across. Okay, let's move on to row two. So what we're gonna do for row two is chain three, one, two, three, and then we're gonna turn our work. Then what we wanna do is that uh, chain three, by the way, too, counts as a double crochet on this row. Then what we're gonna do is that that single crochet that we worked at the end of the last row, we're gonna work a double crochet into that first single crochet that you come to. So right there at the bottom of that chain is where that's located. Oh, and to work a double crochet, if you're not familiar, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert the hook into that stitch, bring up a loop, three loops are on the hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Then what we wanna do is in this chain three space, remember we did a chain three and created a loop? In that chain three space, we're going to work a single crochet right into the space. Then what we're gonna do is work three double crochets into the single crochet that's kind of in between these loops. You can see the stitch is kind of hanging out in there. There's a little loop at the top. So we're gonna work three double crochets into that single crochet. So one double crochet, two double crochet, three double crochet, just like that, okay? And then once again, we're gonna work a single crochet in the chain three space, and then we're just gonna continue this sequence all the way across, okay? So work your single crochet in that chain three space like we just did. Now in that single crochet in between those loops, work three double crochet, so one, two, and three. 
work a single crochet into the chain three space and then three double crochet into that single crochet from the previous row so one two and three just like that and then work a single crochet in that chain three space and then three double crochet into that single crochet from the previous row. So one double crochet, two double crochet, three double crochet, okay? So what we're gonna do, we did a couple of these now, continue across working a single crochet into the chain three space and three double crochets in each one of these single crochets from the previous row, okay? So just do that across and when we get towards the end of this row, we'll rejoin and we'll learn how to work row three. Row three is the last row we need to learn and then we're just gonna be repeating rows two and three over and over and over again for the rest of our scarf, okay? So keep going across with row two and when we rejoin, we'll finish up row two and move on to row three. All right, we're just coming up to the end of the row here. And I'm working a single crochet in that last chain three space of the row. And now we also have a single crochet at the end of the row. And we're gonna work two double crochet into that last single crochet. So just kind of locate it. it might be kind of off to the side. You might have to kind of pick it up with your fingers a little bit. But just work two double crochets in that last single crochet to finish off the row, okay? All right, so now we're going to move on to row three, okay? But I just wanted to show you how pretty this looks. It's really starting to look pretty. So then what we wanna do for row three, this time we're gonna chain one and turn our work. And then that very first double crochet that we just did we're going to work a single crochet into that very first double crochet, just like that. And then we're going to chain three, one, two, three. And then in the centermost stitch of our fan. So remember our fans, you might need to kind of separate them, separate them with your fingers to see, but you can see our, those three double crochets that we did. That very center one will have a stitch at the top, work a single crochet into that center most fan. And then we're gonna chain three once again, one, two, three, and then we're gonna do the same thing. If you need to isolate your fan a little bit to see the stitches, and I find it's easier, you can see if you turn them towards you like this, you can see those stitches a lot easier. You can see that center one is right there, work a single crochet in that center most fan, and chain three, one, two, three. Hop to the next fan. Separate it if needed, turn it towards you a little bit to see those stitches, and we're gonna work a single crochet. Chain three. One, two, three. Work a single crochet into that centermost fan. And we're just doing this all the way across. Chain three, single crochet in the centermost stitch of that fan, and chain three. One, two, three. And we're just doing this all the way across until we get to the end, okay? One, two, three. Let me get a little bit more yarn here. Get situated again. And then we're gonna work single crochet in the center of that fan as well. Chain three. One, two, three. Hop over to the next fan. Work your single crochet in the center of the fan. Chain three. One, two, three. Work a single crochet in the center of that fan, okay? So we're just gonna do this all the way across, and you can see we're starting to get a, like a nice open kind of lattice look in between our little fans here. So keep going across, and when we rejoin, I'll show you how to finish up row three. All right, just coming up to the end of the row here, not too much longer to go. So we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, and then to finish the row, we have that little kind of like half fan at the end, Locate the turning chain, which is at the very end, and that created a space. So right in the turning chain space, go right in there and work a single crochet to finish the row, okay? So let's look at our work. It looks very beautiful. It's shaping up very nicely. So what we wanna do now 
to finish our scarf is to just keep going, repeating rows two and three, two and three, over and over and over again until your scarf is as long as you would like it to be. I'm gonna keep going until I use up my yarn that we talked about earlier. So just keep going. Now when we rejoin, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna have a lot more length. I'm gonna give you some dimensions and we'll finish up our scarf. Okay, just coming up to the end of the last row, and I'm gonna work that single crochet right in there. And our beautiful shawl is complete. Now, as you can see, it's grown quite a bit. As a side note, um, if you notice, I ended on row three um, just to mimic the edge of our starting edge. So if you look at our starting edge, it has a straight edge and ending on row three will give this also a straight edge if you you know want those to mimic each other. If you like the scalloped edge uh, when you finish, you can just end on row two. But I'm gonna end on row three just to get that flat edge to mimic the other side. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is a little bit of finish work. So cut your yarn, and I just wanted to say as a side note, this was the last ball and there's just not quite enough to start a new row, okay? So we're just gonna um, finish up here. And so what we wanna do is wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop just to fasten off. And then grab your yarn needle. And any ends that you have, we'll do one together, I like to flip it over. So there's definitely a front and a back to this shawl. This is the back. You can see it looks a little more like um, bubbly, if you will, like a, like pebbly, I guess. And then the front, you can see those fans. This was the side that faced you when you worked the fans. It just has a little bit of a different look. Okay, so grab your tail and you're gonna thread your tapestry needle or yarn needle, whatever you call it. Some people call it um, a yarn needle. Some call it a tapestry needle. And we're gonna go into those back loops with our needle and just go in one direction and then come back in the other direction. You can go in between those plies too to kind of lock it into place. And then grab your scissors and we're just gonna give it a little snip and take care of those ends. Now go through and see what other ends you have and weave those in as well. Okay, all of our ends are woven in and our shawl looks absolutely beautiful. It's soft and squishy and just totally wearable for any occasion. So that is how you crochet the French buttercream shawl. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.